All right, so now let's have a look at the uh, force plate that's construct constructed with the three uh, dual range force sensors. So uh, as it happens, we just got a, a bottom plate, which is just a, a piece of wood. It happens to be covered with some uh, upholstery from uh, whatever I scavenged it from when I built this. But it's just a, a piece of wood. And what I did was I first put in three, one, two, three uh, bolts uh, at the corners of an equilateral triangle and I put the bolts in because then I could mount the uh, dual range four sensors uh, with just the normal uh, sort of chemistry lab mounting hardware uh, with the, the posts and the clamps. So the dual range four sensors each require a horizontal post to mount them to so the bolt and the chemistry clamp and the post is just to provide um, a mounting uh, spot for each of the three uh, dual range force sensors. And so the force sensors, each of them has its range from 10 to 50 newtons so that the overall uh, force plate has two different ranges. One range with all the force sensors set on 10 newtons and one range with all the force sensors set on 50 newtons. So for the smallest uh, rocket motors or smaller forces, uh, we generally set the range to 10 newtons. So let's go ahead and, and work the explanation uh, with that. So once the uh, sensors are mounted that way, there's a top plate. And the top plate, uh, we need to take some care when we set the top plate on there that the uh, what's touching the sensors is actually the wood itself and not the upholstery around the edges. Um, so it's just a top plate and it has a bolt and as you'll see in a bit uh, the bolt is for mounting of the uh, rocket motor itself uh, and we'll show you how that goes. Anyway so the top plate gets set on top uh, peeking underneath to check that uh, all of the uh, four sensors are touching the wood and not touching the upholstery. So now when something pushes down on the plate, that force is supported or distributed on the three dual range four sensors. And you say, well, why three four sensors? And it has to do with the stability of a three-legged stool. All right, so that's the, the, the basics of the force plate's physical con uh, configuration. But remember, we haven't calibrated these force sensors yet. Uh, we, we calibrated the one over on the, uh, the ring stand that we were hanging stuff from. So before we use these for measurements, we need to calibrate them. So let's go to experiment, calibrate, and let's go LabQuest 1 dual range force sensor. And let's go ahead and calibrate one now and just remember uh, sensor one, two, three. So uh, we'll enter zero uh, for sensor one before we put the mass on it and then we'll put the 100 gram mass on it and we'll enter 0 0.98 newtons and now we'll select sensor two and calibrate now select uh, zero and then we'll put the mass on it and then we'll select uh, 0 0.98 newtons and now we'll unselect two and we'll select three calibrate now zero and then we'll put the mass on it and 0 0.98 newtons uh, keep it and now done. So now we've got uh, hmm, kind of odd that one is coming up negative 4.7 or something. Let's go ahead and let's recalibrate that one because that uh, that doesn't look right to me. So calibrate one, do a range force sensor, calibrate now, put in zero because nothing's on it. Go ahead and keep it and put the 9.8 up there, or 0 0.98, 100, 100 grams, 0 0.98 newtons. Keep it, and then done. And 
So, okay, that one looks right. And then this one is 2, should be 0.98. And then this one is uh, 0.98. Okay. So the number's bouncing around, but we're used to it bouncing around. So now we put the force plate up there. When you put the top plate on, you need to take some care that the uh, wood itself is resting on each of the sensors and not on the upholstery. All right, so uh, now we've got the top plate up there. And what you can see is that now it's measuring essentially the weight that the top plate is exerting. And we can adjust the position of the top plate to make it a little, uh, the weight a little more evenly uh, distributed. So now they're all close to three. Not perfect, but that's close enough. And now let's go ahead and uh, zero it. And what zeroing does is it subtracts out the weight of the plate so that now if we run it, we're measuring the additional force that some experimental factor, your rocket thrust or your hand, uh, might create on it. Now, uh, as I was doing that, we see something interesting here, and this is a, an important thing to look out for, is uh, we see that we got kind of a flat line there in the blue trace, which is uh, the force two. And what the flat line means is it means that the sensor has reached the top end of its adjustment range, or it, it flat lines because you're putting a larger force than the sensor is capable of measuring uh, at that time. So one needs to take care and you can see that that's about 10 newtons so the uh, force sensor 2 didn't want to go above 10 newtons so when you're using the force plate if something ever tops out like that uh, you need to do something differently uh, maybe set the force sensors to 50 newtons at the top end of their scale recalibrate re-zero and so on, or I figure out how to adjust your experiment so that the forces you're applying are smaller. All right, um, let's see. Go ahead and zero it again. So let's also show how one can use uh, the known calibration weight, and this is the one that's uh, 21.685 newtons uh, to double check what's happening here just in the sense of calibration. Um, well, first, before we do that, let's make sure we had it zeroed. All right, now if we were to run it, all right, so now we've got just the statistics for force one. Let's go ahead and take that off and let's get the stats uh, for both the force one, force two, and force three up there. So essentially it's telling us that uh, uh, the mean of each one, 8.253, 8.015, and 4.958. And it's, it's telling us that uh, those are the means of each of the three traces. So we open up Windows Calculator here and we add those together. 8.253 plus 8.015 plus 4.958. 58 that's going to be 21.226 and what we were expecting is 21.685 so this is a extra step that uh, I like to record because if you recall we calibrated at a lower end of the scale so we, we know the weight known is 
21.685 Newton and we know the weight measured So in spite of in spite of all our calibration efforts so far the measured weight is a little different from the known good weight but and that's because we actually calibrated it uh, with with forces that are much smaller than we're intending to measure but we can fix this in the spreadsheet once you have the data in the spreadsheet you have time force one force two force three force total which is just the sum and then we're going to have the force calibrated or we're going to adjust it uh, but with the known and the measured uh, so you'd uh, enter a formula into your spreadsheet which the calibrated force now uh, would be equal to the uh, when you run the calibration here it's um, the known weight of your calibration mass divided by the measured weight of your calibration mass and then times F total. So each of your calibrated forces would be equal to this element in the spreadsheet times this uh, calibration factor and the calibration factor is the ratio of the known weight uh, to the measured weight and in this way, uh, what we have is about uh, uh, a 2% error if we just didn't adjust it, uh, would uh, squeeze that error back down uh, less than 1%.